mistakes when I first started. So I decided to go through and start a YouTube channel to go through and discuss the, the mistakes that I made and also to go through and discuss my wins. Uh, one thing that I'm really passionate about is making sure that you guys launch through structure and through strategy. So that way you can make sure that you not only do it right the first time, but that, that way you also do it with some really great results. Um, so I'm really excited for tonight's session. So I am the leading instructor at Her Hustle Academy. I teach my three-step signature formula called Launch360, where I help my clients build structure and strategic product-based businesses without burning out and also without spending their wheels. I'm also the owner and CEO of One at Wardrobe. We are an online women's wear brand where we are dedicated to giving women of color um, the products and services that they need in order to go through and step into any room and make a statement. All right. 2023 is going to be your most profitable year ever. I'm going to say that every single day until this boot camp is over. I want that to be embedded into your head. But the only way that 2023 will be your most profitable year ever is if you do the work. Right? Do not be so addicted to education that you are allergic to execution. That is literally like my motto for Q4. I, I am done going through and watching master classes and courses and all of these things and not actually executing on the information. I've read so many books this year, us inside a book club, we've read so many books this year. It's time for us to actually execute on the information that we've learned, right? So 2023 will be your most profitable year ever. I am claiming that for all, how many of y'all are on here? 110 of you guys. So I am excited about that. So I am excited for tonight, y'all. I'm just excited about everything. Your girl has some more Red Bull tonight. So I am hype, pumped. We're about to get to it. So why do you need to understand e-commerce trends to prepare your business for 2023? Why do I need to understand the trends? Why do I need to know the predictions? Why do I need to know all the things that are going on within my industry? So let's get into it. I'm gonna move y'all over so I can see my screen. All right, so e-commerce trends, you guys are in ever, they're changing all the time. Thanks to COVID, right? Thanks to good old Jeff Bezos with Amazon, e-commerce literally is changing rapidly, continuously. So we have to make sure that we're staying on top of these things, right? So due to COVID-19, these changes are happening at a faster rate than ever. So it is imperative for us to know who, what, when, where, why, and how our customers are going through and receiving and consuming information. So also due to the growth of technology, today's customers are expecting a lot more from the companies that they support. Studies even have shown that consumers use up to five devices to go through and access the internet, especially Gen Z. We got iPads, we got iPhones, we got Apple Watches, right? We got laptops, we have desktop computers. We have so much access to technology. It's important for us to make sure that we're keeping up with the trends. And I'll be talking about that a lot more tonight. So these expectations and trends literally change every single year and they help shape us. They help shape our brands to make sure that we're keeping up with our customers' taste. Those of you guys who attended the Her Hustle Retreat, I gave them um, how our five senses correlate with marketing. And it was literally like the most amazing presentation because it really showed them how their five senses literally triggers their target audience and how they can use marketing to attract their target audience's five senses. And that's the same thing that we have to understand is what is the taste our audience have and how can we go through and create marketing strategies that correlate to that? All right, so why is um, it important to understand industry trends? Why is it important? Let's hop into that. So number one is it's gonna help you with forecasting. We're gonna be able to understand what's gonna happen before it happens. Experts have already gone through and done the research for us. It's just up, for, up to us to execute on the information that they've already done the research on. And you guys are gonna get 23 um, marketing strategies and techniques tonight that are supposed to be the latest and hottest and greatest of 2023. So if you stay into the loop, uh, implement the following and the latest trends of how your business is gonna operate, it's gonna allow you to be much more easier. It's a lot of things that are gonna flow a lot better because you'll really understand the different things that are happening within your industry. Number two is that you're gonna be able to build authority and you're also gonna be able to build credibility. So when you're first going through, like when you are the first to go through and implement anything, you're gonna be known as a leader. The people who got on TikTok when TikTok was a baby have millions of views at this point. So it's important for us to keep up with the trends so that way we can be the first to get into it 
and we're already in the know. This also allows our audience to know that we're not afraid to try new things and it always goes through and sets, up, sets us apart. Number three is we want to make sure that we're keeping up with the trends by consistently learning. So what are the new tools? What are the new events that we should go through and participate in? What are the different ways that we can go through and be effective? This will give us a wide variety of things that we can go through and work with, and therefore we'll be able to experience with things and generate some new ideas. All right, so next would be you won't be caught off guard. You will not be caught off guard if you know what's coming. If you know what's coming, you won't be caught off guard. Just like my grandma used to say to me all the time, if it was a snake, it would have bit you. If, it, if you knew the snake was coming, it wouldn't go through and bite you, right? So you want to make sure you understand the trends that are coming up. So new trends within your industry are going to come up into conversation regularly. If you are doing a great job of making sure that you are researching your industry, you'll see trends come up in articles all the time, right? So if you want to be seen as a leader, you wanna have authority within your industry, you want to make sure that you take part in those conversations and discuss your experience with the training tools and topics. And you guys can go through and do that too um, when you are communicating with like your business besties or anyone in your community to know what's the latest and hottest and greatest things out there. Number five, it's gonna open up new opportunities for you. So by participating in these trends, as they come up, you'll be able to be introduced to new people, new skills, new events that are going on in your industry. And this will help represent you in such a greater light because you'll be open to more new opportunities on more of a frequent basis. All right, and then number six is going to be your growth opportunities. This is gonna allow your business to grow and allow you to grow as an entrepreneur. So as things in the world continue to change, it's crucial that you change with them. So although it can be difficult to want change, especially when things are going well within your business, change means evolution, right? And therefore, that is a good thing. So those are a couple of reasons as to why you need to know about your industry trends and the predictions going on as it relates to your business. All right, so e-commerce trends dictate the way your customers expect your business to act. So here are 23 trends um, to consider as you plan your business's e-commerce growth for 2023 and beyond. I'm going to go through this slowly because I want you guys to write down every single 23 of these. Because this is literally, I probably looked at at least 30 articles and I wrote down every trend and I tallied how many that came up after I looked at all of these different reports. And these were the top 23. So I want you guys to make sure you jot these down. All right, so 23 e-commerce marketing trends and predictions for 2023. All right, so the first one, you guys, is that Gen Z will continue to influence marketing more than millennials. Gen Z has taken over the world. I don't know where they get this generation from, but they are literally taking over everything, right? So Gen Z is referred to as the generation that's born in between 1997 and 2012. Millennials are anywhere who are born, born from 1981 to 1996. Gen Z will soon become the largest and also the most powerful group of consumers. Everybody's money is betting on Gen Z. Alex said she used to be Gen Z, I'm crying. You're, I mean, if you were born before then, Alex, you should definitely be a millennial, right? So retailers must go through and adopt, that the, adopt the traits of these powerhouse generations and also their buying preferences. So 55% of people who are Gen Z use smartphones more than five hours per day. And 26% per, of them are on their phone 10 hours per day. 97% of people who are Gen Z use social media as their top shopping inspiration. And I know someone's thinking to myself, well, I'm not targeting Gen Z. So what does this, this have to do with me? They are shaping culture. Whether you are targeting them or not, they are shaping the way online shopping is just because they are the most powerful and the largest group of consumers. So I know, since we know that Gen Z is like the top consumer, it's imperative that we adopt the habits that they have in order to reach these users, right? Because they want information quickly. Um, they really recommend going through and using short form video, fast shipping times, social commerce, even going through and building an omni-channel presence. We'll talk about all of these things later on. And even if you are not targeting Gen Z, their habits are shaping and changing culture. So your business needs to change as well, unfortunately. 
I know some of us don't want to be on TikTok dancing and nobody told you to dance this, but you do need to make sure that you are creating some short form video, right? Google is not Gen Z's top um, search platform. TikTok is. Gen Z is getting all of their information from TikTok. And I am a very avid TikTok user. If y'all did not know, just to, sh just to share that with y'all. I'll be going on TikTok to search stuff before I go to Google. I just need a quick answer. I don't have time to read. I need something quick, right? So let's move on to number two. Number two is live shopping. I know many of you guys are afraid to go on live and we got to get out of it. Unfortunately, I see Louisa's eyes going crazy right now. <laughs> Unfortunately, we got to get out of the habit of being afraid of live. And I'll tell you why shortly, right? So successful business owners have recognized that the advantages of going on live video to sell their items and engage with their customers have been doing numbers. Shemeka said launch party. Yes, live shopping is super fun. So studies show that live commerce, which is basically going on live with your e-commerce business, sales are going to account for up to 20% of the total sales of e-commerce by 2026. That is a lot. Which means that we need to go through and start making sure we are getting on live now so we can get ahead of the curve. So while live streaming was once only a fun feature for social media users to go through and use, it's now going to be a vital solution for e-commerce sales. So we have to make sure that we're going on live, you guys. So live selling will become a prominent trend in the next decade for small businesses that are still looking for leads and also developing their customer service um, base as well or customer base as well. And then over here on the right hand side, I am giving you guys strategies and things that you can use to actually implement these things. So live try on hauls are always going to be great. Live Q&A sessions. One thing that I really recommend you guys do is download the app Comment Soul. I use that for all of my live um, streaming sessions on the app. If you guys don't know what Comment Soul is, it is basically a app that you can use on your phone and it allows you to have your own app. So if you want an app for your store, you can go through and use Comment Soul. I'm not gonna lie to y'all, it is very expensive. If you wanna wait to go ahead and use it, definitely do so. I think I pay like $165 or something like that a month for it. It's very expensive. But it is amazing because your audience will be able to see you do live try on hauls inside of the app. And all they have to do is type in the words comment sold and they'll be able to go through and purchase the item instantly. Comment sold, S-O-L-D. Um, also, Facebook group live sessions. If you guys want to go through and create maybe a VIP Facebook group for your audience, you can go through and go on live in there too. And then also one thing that I'm really about to start doing, I should not be giving y'all the tea because I've done a lot of research and this is actually a really great strategy, is going on live with influencers and doing try on hauls together. So imagine if I'm an influencer and Louisa is um, her, the, a boutique owner and I'm a direct representation of Louisa's audience. I can go on live with Louisa and do a try on haul with Louisa which means that not only is Louisa's audience looking, but guess what? That influencer's audience is watching that live too, which is gonna get you a plethora of followers, a bunch of sales very, very quickly. Oh, Tiffany just dropped in a 30 day free trial to comment so, so definitely go check that out. So live shopping y'all is coming up. It is coming fierce, get on it, get with it. It is not going away. All right, so up next, you guys, is inflation. I know we don't want to talk about it, but it's here. So let's go ahead and just talk about it, right? So inflation will make customers research more and unfortunately spend less. That should not make us afraid. That should not make us afraid to start our businesses. That should not make us afraid to market, right? So 2022 has already impacted customers' thinking and will likely go through and affect their spending habits in the future. So brands that really reach their audiences, brands that have strong marketing strategies, brands that really create searchable content are going to be the ones that will win. I'm not sure if y'all ever heard the quote, but the best marketer wins, right? So we have to make sure that we're implementing marketing strategies that really correlate with our audience because inflation is here. People are researching a lot more into brands and they're spending a little bit less, right? So like I said, this shouldn't make you timid. This shouldn't make you afraid. This should really make you work harder to make sure that you are reaching your potential customer. So how can we implement um, inflation into our strategies? How am I able to still make sure I'm creating a successful business 
even though inflation is here, right? So since we know inflation has already impacted our customer spending habits, it's important for us to understand our business's financial model. How often are we gonna go through a run sales? What is going to be our pricing strategy? What's gonna be my price range? What is the lowest I'm gonna have something in my store at? And what's the highest I'm gonna have something in my store at, right? So we have to understand that. This is not a time where we're cutting quarters and this is not a opportunity for us to cheat ourselves. Because inflation is here, that means that I still can't cheat myself because I still have money to make too. We still got bills to pay. So this does not mean lower your prices to a point where you don't get any profit. This means increase your prices, but increase your marketing so that way it's more attractive to your customers. Right? So for example, increase your prices, but also increase your marketing efforts to showcase the value that you're going to be offering your customers. Create irresistible offers create irresistible offers. So when you're doing a discount or when you're doing a sale, make it so irresistible, but they have no other reason to not purchase it. Right? And I know someone's thinking, well, how do I do that? We have to really understand first our audience. We have to understand their wants. We have to go through and understand their needs. And then when we do create this irresistible offer, we have to make sure that we're still getting profits in return. Every time that we do a sale, every time that we do a campaign, we have to make it seem like it's the best thing since sliced bread. Like they need, like you need this. If you do not get this, not only are you missing out, go through and create some FOMO. Go through and create a little bit of sense of, of urgency. FOMO for you guys that, that don't know, it's fear of missing out. No one wants to miss out. So we want to go through and do that too. So the two tools that are going to help you fight inflation is making sure you have flexible returns and also making sure you do have a couple budget-friendly options for your audience. All right, let's move forward. Next, you guys, is number four, making sure that you establish an omni-channel marketing plan. This was the number one prediction for 2023. So you definitely want to write this down. If you don't know what an omni-channel presence is or omni-channel marketing plan is, I'm gonna explain it to you. So COVID-19 is still here, even though some of us have forgotten right? It's still here. However, it is a thing of the past to a lot of our customers. People are not even thinking about COVID anymore at this point, right? So as customers are returning to in-person shopping, 2023 is a really good time to make sure that you are optimizing an omni-channel presence. And what does that mean, Troya? So omni-channel marketing, you guys, are basically a strategy where business are promoting their products across multiple channels. Gone are the days where we can just use Instagram. We can't just use one platform anymore. We got to use almost all of them, right? We have to meet our customers where they are. If I know that my customer's main uh, platform of choice or their main channel is Instagram, I'm going to put all of my efforts into Instagram. But that doesn't mean that I don't need to be on TikTok. That doesn't mean I don't need to be on Pinterest. That doesn't mean I don't need to be on Twitter, right? We have to go through and broaden our reach. So what an omni-channel presence is going to do is it's going to allow you to promote your products across multiple social media channels. And also, you guys need to note this too, this also means multiple devices. So you cannot just go through and create a website for a desktop anymore. We need to have a separate website for a media platform, a mobile platform rather. So we need to make sure that we're creating our websites for multiple devices. So that way we can create similar messaging and also have cohesive content. So nearly 75% of buyers use multiple channels before purchasing, right? 73% of consumers report that various channels that they're using during their buyer's journey. So we do need to start using multiple um, uh, channels. That doesn't mean using Instagram and saying that you posted it to Facebook. That's not doing anything for you. Create content curated for Facebook. Create content curated for Instagram. Create content curated for TikTok. There should be no reason why we're just going through and posting the same reels on TikTok, the same reel to Facebook and the same reel to Instagram. That's not going through and using your efforts because there's a different buyer persona that you could be reaching in different places. And I'm not telling y'all you have to do this tomorrow. Take it day by day, take it slow. I'm just giving you the information for now, right? Awesome, so how to implement this into your strategy? So as omni-channel strategies continue to gain positive results for e-commerce businesses, it's time to start using the different channels to promote your products and even to go through and sell your products. So go through and look 
into adding more platforms, more selling platforms, reach your audience at different places at different times. Another thing that you guys can do too is start looking into other selling platforms. So Etsy might be a good platform for you. I know a lot of people don't recommend it, but maybe try it out. Maybe try to put your products on Etsy. Maybe go through and see if there's another platform out there that you can go through and um, create as well. So create content and add it to different platforms. Yes, but you need to curate the content for the different platforms. We're not going through and placing TikToks on, on Instagram and different things of that sort. So that is what it means to have an omni-channel presence. We need to make sure that we are creating content for different channels because every single channel might reach one of your different buyer personas. That might be something you want to do too. Um, especially the ladies who are like in Launch 360, we've talked a lot about buyer personas. See those three buyer personas that you have and give each one of them a different channel. All right, next is going to be deliver on delivery. Thanks to Jeff Bezos, you guys, and the fulfillment process of good old Amazon, your customers want faster shipping times at lower rates. So go through and say thank you to Jeff Bezos because we got to go through and up our shipping game, right? So in a world where instant gratification reigns, delivery is no exception. So Amazon has set the standard for shipping when they began offering next day and even same day delivery. So if a product arrives late, if it arrives broken, your customer is going to blame you. They're not going to blame UPS. They're not going to blame USPS. Guess who they're hitting up? They're hitting up you before they even call USPS or FedEx and all of them, right? So we need to make sure that we are creating faster and more efficient shipping times. So how can we implement this into our strategy? I really recommend all of you guys to create a standard operating procedure for shipping. Unfortunately, my mom is not tax tech savvy at all. And she ships all of my orders when I'm out of town. And I could literally show her a thousand times, but she's not going to understand it. So I had to create a SOP to walk her through the entire process of shipping out an order. And we need to make sure we have this too. So what days do we ship? At what times are we visiting the post office each day? What are your steps for processing an order? What are the, the steps for delivering an order? Right, so implementing faster shipping times is going to be amazing for your brand and for your business. So one thing that you guys will see soon when I do my um, comeback campaign for One It Wardrobe, one of my unique value propositions that I've added is free shipping all day, every day. And the reason why I've done this is because I understand my target audience and I really understand their needs, their wants and their desires and they want things fast. The type of woman that I'm attracting, she has things to go to last minute. She's trying to get things fast and she's not trying to sit there and worry about paying for shipping. So definitely make sure that you guys are implementing faster shipping times than ever before. All right, so next we're talking about mobile shopping. Mobile shopping. Folks is not shopping on their computers no more. They do doing work on the computer and that's about it, right? So have you guys ever noticed that as our devices get smaller and smaller and smaller, the iPhone gets thinner and thinner and thinner, but guess what? The expectations of them get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So same thing happens with us as business owners, right? So online shopping no longer means sitting at a computer. So mobile devices, you guys are counting for 71% of all retail traffic. Over half of the people who are visiting your store is visiting it from a cell phone. When we are building out our sites, Sometimes we think so much about the desktop making that pretty and glamorous and all the things and having all the bells and all the whistles. We need to be doing that for mobile, right? And it goes through and also generates 61% of all online orders as well. So customers create and they go through and pick e-commerce. E-commerce is just a fancy word for mobile commerce, customers shopping through their mobile devices. And they really want to make sure that this is a preferred shopping channel. This is their preferred shopping channel. So you want to make sure you stay ahead of the curve and build a mobile first mentality. Anytime you're creating anything for your brand, think about mobile first. And that goes for every generation. Every generation is shopping mobile first. Once I seen my auntie who is almost 70 years old on Amazon, I said, oh, yes, this is a mobile first day and age because sis did not know how to use a cell phone at least a year ago, but she is on Amazon ordering everything. And I love that for her, right? 
So we have to make sure that we are building a mobile first mentality. So that means redesigning your website to have a mobile first experience. And this does not mean that you are taking your desktop and making it shrink into a smaller screen. That is not what we're talking about. We want to create a website specifically for mobile. So when you guys are creating your sites on Shopify, at the top right corner or the top left corner, you're going to see a computer screen and then you're going to see a little cell phone icon. You have to update both simultaneously to make sure that they're optimized all together. This also means that we're making sure that we have phone friendly payment options. Everyone needs on their site by the end of this week, if you are up and running, you need to have Apple Pay and you need to have Google Pay. By the end of this week, that's going to be an additional homework assignment. Um, can we have a mobile app on Shopify? I use Comment Sold for my, my mobile app. Um, and it basically takes everything from my Shopify and just puts it on there through Comment Sold. But you still do have to customize it. Um, there is another one on uh, Shopify, another app that you can go through and use. I forget the name of it. It starts with a V. If you see an app for creating a um, mobile app and it starts with a V, that's the one. I don't remember the name of it, though. All right. Up next, you guys, is post-purchase experience. Post-purchase experience. So we're all guilty of it, but let's try to get out of the habit of not following up with our customers and nurturing them after they've purchased. I'm guilty of it. I've done it. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have done it. After your customer purchases, we probably don't even talk to them folks anymore, but we have to make sure that we don't do that. So, right, so studies have shown that it's easier to get a returning customer than it is to get a new customer. That means that it's more money in the follow-up, right? So you must also understand that your customer experience does not end after purchase. The customer experience never ends. We have to continuously, continuously, continuously pour back into these people because it's going to be cheaper for us to go through and get an old customer than, for, than it is for us to get a new customer. Right, so how do we implement this into our strategy? So to ensure that you don't leave your customers astray, start thinking of a post-purchase strategy. And these things don't have to be long. They can be a couple bullet points or a couple sentences, you guys. Or create an SOP, a standard operating procedure for following up with your customers. Right, so how are you gonna go through and send them tracking and delivery information? We know Shopify does that automatically, right? So another thing that we need to start doing is following up with them after their order. So we need to have maybe some um, email marketing flows set up through our email marketing platforms. I use Klaviyo for mine. After they've gone through and purchased, how are we nurturing that relationship after purchase, right? Next thing that you can go through and do too is send them their return or exchange information right away. I know sometimes we're really afraid of return. Sometimes we're really afraid of exchanges, but even if you just send it to them, that just lets them know that you are going through and taking care of their needs. Next thing is requesting a review. Giving them an incentive for doing a review too could be something that you can do too. I use Looks for my, my product reviews, probably one of the best apps out there that I recommend for reviews because it's such a great platform and everything's automated. It's called Looks, L-O-O-X. And you can go through and download that on the back end of your Shopify store. You can send them exclusive offers and even you can go through and give them a phone call and ask them about their experience. All in all, don't leave them be. There is money being left on the table when we are not following up with our audience. So that was number seven, post-purchase experience. All right, number eight, you guys, is we got to increase our customer service. Unfortunately, since COVID is kind of over, but not really, people are going back into the stores. People are shopping back IRL again, which means that they are getting used to customer service experiences in store again. And they're not expecting anything else or anything less of us just because we're online business owners, right? So with so much competition online, offering poor customer service is a guarantee for a recipe for disaster pretty much, right? So if a customer has a bad experience shopping with your site, there's a very good chance that they're not gonna return. And there's a, also a very good chance that they're gonna tell their friends to not shop with you as well. So with this in mind, it's important for us to focus on improving our customer service efforts and making sure we are offering our customers with a seamless experience and an easy purchase. So I would really recommend creating a schedule where you are creating and communicating with your audience on a daily basis. So let's say you might go through and do like 30 minutes on your lunch break and maybe 30 minutes when you get off of work. 
and scheduling it. Set an alarm clock on your cell phone where you are doing customer service actions during, during those time periods. Also, one thing that's one of my number one pet peeves, you guys, my number one pet peeve of all time when it comes to business is when business owners have in their Instagram bio, do not DM us. That's probably like my number one thing because it's like Instagram is literally the easiest way for your customers to get in communication with you. So why are we telling them to not DM us and to send us an email? I understand for like maybe, I understand, but however I don't. <laughs> I think that we need to make sure that our customers com can communicate with us the easiest way that they can. And that's gonna be through Instagram, right? So remember your customers are on your site alone. They don't have a sales associate following them in the store like they do in a physical location. So we have to make it easy for our customers to know that we're there. And we're gonna talk about that a lot more. Right, so let's get into it. Next is going to be representation and inclusivity. Sometimes I cannot say that word, so y'all disregard. <laughs> so next we have representation and inclusivity. So with a rise of representation, you guys, with brands all around the world, studies have shown and they suggest that inclusivity will cause a boom in sales and engagement across your brand. Right. So I think it's something for us to really take into consideration is being more inclusive. So consumers trust brands that promote diversity and inclusion. So this is going to allow your brand's efforts to create an environment that's really welcoming to everyone of different sizes, different races. And representation is going to allow you to get an increase in market share. You're going to be able to reach more people. Right. So I understand sometimes we want to create brands for just African American women. And that's something I'm getting out of too. I don't want my brands to be just for African American women. I want Caucasian women to go through and shop with me. I want Hispanic women to come through and shop with me. I want Asian women to come through and shop with me. And that doesn't mean that I've created, I'm out of my niche. I'm still in my niche. However, I'm still going through and trying to be a lot more diverse. Right. So how can we implement this into our strategy? Begin looking to hiring models, employees, and reaching out to audiences who are different than the demographics and body types that you've previously represented. And I'm not saying you have to go through and do this tomorrow, but start thinking about it, right? How can I go through and make my brand a lot more diverse? Sometimes we get mad at H&M and these brands for only having white models. And look at us. Sometimes we only have black models. It's the same thing. We can't get mad at them. And we're not, we're not going through and being inclusive either. So we have to start thinking about those things too. All right, number 10 is flexible payment options are continuously being very, very, very um, wanted, <laughs> all in all. People want more flexible payment options, right? So one of the biggest reasons for shopping cart abandonment, you guys, is difficult payment or difficult checkout process, right? So studies have shown that digital and mobile wallets have accounted for over half of the worldwide e-commerce payment transactions between 2020 and all the way to 2022. And the digital wallets, you guys, is whenever you're like on your cell phone and then you you like double tap and then you have all of like your cards and stuff. I'm trying to show y'all like right here. You have like all of your cards and stuff like that. That's your digital wallet on your cell phone. So your customers are using that more than ever before. So we want to make sure that we have created platforms on the back end that support that. So that's going to be like your Apple Pay, Google um, Pay, similar to what we just talked about. However, PayPal has gone through and it is now the number one payment gateway. And I was actually a little bit, so actually I wasn't surprised, but I thought Stripe would probably be like right there close behind it. But PayPal is the number one payment gateway and it has over 60% market share. That's insane. Like that's a lot. People are really using PayPal more than ever before, right? So having flexible payment options are going to make it easier for your audience to purchase. And also it's going to make it easier for them to afford the things that they want. So one thing that I would definitely say is create a list of the best um, and most used uh, payment gateway platforms and go through and add them to the back end of your Shopify. So is that going to be Sizzle? Is that going to be Afterpay? Um, I know that they have a couple new ones now. Klarna, we want to add all and as many as we can. Because guess what? If I am banned from using Sizzle and people get banned from using Sizzle if they don't make them payments and I have Afterpay and you don't have Afterpay, 
I'm not going to go through and make a purchase with you because you don't have the payment platform that I need. So add all of them. Every single one that you can think of, add every single one. Um, next is you want to make sure that you are also doing the buy now, pay later platforms, also adding shop pay, and then also PayPal to the back end of your platforms too. We want to offer every single payment platform that we can. All right, number 11, let's hop into it. So I talked to you guys a little bit about this yesterday, but buy online, pick up in store apparently is like booming right now. And I'm like, okay, let's talk about it. I don't do it because I like to buy stuff that I don't need. So I need to go in the store to figure out what I don't need. <laughs> so, but apparently it's booming right now. So buy online, pick up in store, you guys, it's been around for years, but it has seen a huge increase due to COVID. When COVID came, people were not going in stores. They were buying their merchandise online leave it like literally sitting in their parking spot parking lot and going through and waiting for the service attendant to go through and bring it to their cars right so customers don't want to waste time they don't want to waste energy going into stores sometimes a lot of the time stores don't even have what you need so they are going through and opting in for a buy online pick up in store so buy online pick up in store is going to provide your audience and your customers with the ability to purchase online and schedule a pickup for their items at a physical location and when I seen these numbers right here, y'all, I was astonished. I was like, okay, I got to look and see how I can implement this into my business because they, apparently buy online, pick up in store is predicted to be a $703 billion market by 2027. That's insane. And I know some of y'all are looking at me like, girl, my inventory is in the other room. My inventory is in my living room. How am I going to be able to implement this, right? So although you are an e-commerce business owner, there are still options that you have to take advantage of this. So you might want to go through and do a local pickup or also lo local delivery where you are allowing your audience to go through and meet you at a location where you can go through and do pickup or delivery. You can go through and do that. Maybe on the weekends, every Saturday between 9 a.m. and 12 p.m., you're doing local delivery. That could be something that you could do too. Um, and one thing that I've really been thinking about doing is my nail tech, or not my nail tech, my lash tech, she has a empty room inside of her last studio. And I was thinking of like every other day, me just bringing the pickup orders and just allowing my audience to meet me there in order to do pickup. That could be something you can do too. Maybe you know a hairstylist or a lash tech or a nail tech who has some empty space and you can go there maybe a few times out of the week and meet your customers there to give them their order. So you're not meeting them at random locations. I used to do um, local pickup because I noticed that a lot of people in Tampa didn't have really good options as far as shopping, but I got tired of meeting people at gas stations and Publix. It was getting real sketchy. <laughs> so I'm like, if I do it again, it has to be at an actual location. So that's why I'm like, I might just go through and hit up my last check and ask her, maybe on Tuesdays and Thursdays, can I do um, local pickup here at your studio and just pay her a percentage or you know anything that, she's, that she wants? And that's giving your lash tech, I'm telling my nail tech today. Yes, definitely ask them. They will definitely do it, especially if they have some extra space, hand them over like maybe a couple of dollars. They are definitely probably going to be open to it because guess what? It's going to bring them business in return, the customers who are picking up from you. All right, next is going to be personalization, personalization. So 60% of consumers say that they'll likely come back to a business as a repeat customer if they have a personalized shopping experience. Starbucks is notorious. They have the best personalized experience that there is known to man. Not only do they write your name, even though they spell it wrong every single time, they write your name on that cup, <laughs> right? And they say, order is ready for Didi, order is ready for Louisa. That gives you a personalized feeling because you feel as if that item is literally meant for you. There's something about someone having saying your name that makes it a little bit more attractive. Not only are they the number one retailer for personalization because of that aspect, but they make all of their orders have an ability to be 100% customizable. I think Tiffany was with me one day when I went to Starbucks with her and she was like, oh my gosh, you order like a thousand things in your Starbucks drink. And I'm like, yeah, I do. Like I have a very personalized Starbucks order, right? And I think that that's something else that really makes them um, very keen to personalization is because they really allow your, your really allow you to have a personalized experience. So if you don't personalize your content, you can even personalize your content to your audience too. Um, you're going to be losing your customers to audiences and brands who are targeting their customers through personalization. 
So not only can you personalize your products and add a service component that's personalized, but you can also personalize your content too to meet your target audience's needs, needs as well. So one thing that I did to personalize um, my target audience is, um, if you guys have paid attention on the One at Wardrobe site, every single article of clothing was named after a Black woman. And that was a actual strategy that we did was because I wanted to let them know that there were some type of like inclusion and that these pieces were meant for them. So I tried to look to see like, who are my most popular customers and not necessarily most popular customers, but the customers who spent the most money with me and we would name pieces after them. Well, we had our brand ambassadors, even though that was a disaster, we named every single article of clothing after that brand ambassador. So that could be something that you could do too. Right, so first remember that you have to remove yourself from the equation. You are not a factor here. I am so sorry to blow your ego. You are not a factor here, right? Get to know your audience and get to know their preferences. What do they like? What do they enjoy? Know their every move, create content, and create strategies that really revolve around them. Remember that you are dating your target audience. You are in a whole full blown relationship with these people and you don't even know them. Right, so we have to make sure that we are taking our target audience on dates. That's gonna be your campaigns, right? When you're taking them out on a nice date, that's gonna be the campaign that you're creating for them. Right, we wanna get to know them. Awesome, let's move forward. Next is gonna be 13, user-generated content. So when it comes to user-generated content, this is known as UGC. User-generated content is content that is created by your customers and also content that is created by influencers. This is not content that you are creating. The user is creating it. User-generated content is the number one way to build trust. Number one, customers have more faith in organic user-generated content than they do in branded content. That's why the first thing that we do when we go on Amazon, when we're buying something new is we go straight to the reviews. If it don't got no review, I ain't buying it. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> but if it's on Amazon, it don't have no reviews, I'm not buying it. <laughs> so that is why user-generated content is so important. It's because it builds trust. User-generated content can consist of customer photos, videos, reviews. And these offer fantastic social proof for your brand. And it creates an incredible ounce of credibility for your brand as well there too. So how can we implement this? You can go through and see your customers a post-purchase review um, request. You can go through and um, create an affiliate program. You can create a rewards program. You can offer them money off if they tag you in a post. You can encourage your customers to be your influencers, which we all should be going through and doing. Um, you should offer maybe a branded package to create a content-worthy unboxing experience, right? So if you offer branded packaging, you want to tell your customers, unbox your um, package when you get it on your Instagram story or something along those lines. I know inside of our packages, we had an instruction manual to go through and tell our customers to unbox and share their packages on their Instagram story. It was literally like a step-by-step -step instruction. Like get your package from the, like get your open your package, um, place the item on top, take a picture of it, upload it to Instagram, tag us, literally give them an instruction manual for creating a Instagram story unboxing experience. So that is 13, UGC. All right, number 14 is conversational marketing. We gotta talk to the people, y'all, unfortunately. I know we don't want to, but we gotta talk to our customers. It has to build a conversation. So like we discussed earlier, customers are shopping alone. When they are on your website, they don't have no sales associate following them telling them, oh, girl, it's cute. I remember I used to work at Hollister and they used to tell us to tell customers stuff look cute, even though sometimes it didn't look cute. I never did it, but they used to tell us to do that, <laughs> right? So you want to go through and make sure that there's a way for you to, to conversate with your customers on your site. This is going to be a game changer when it comes to making sure that you increase your average order value and you prevent abandoned carts. So meet your customers halfway with the conversational tactics and let them know that they have assistance from the time they hit your website link to the time they check out. So customers want a streamlined service when they're on your site. And I know y'all looking like, dang, these customers want a lot. Yup, they really do. <laughs> and it's up to you to go through and deliver, right? So they want to make sure that they have some type of chat boxes, 
maybe like a live chat, maybe like a VA on there, or maybe like a personalized email. So they want these things, right? So how can we implement this into our strategy? So chat boxes, like we just talked about live chatting, you may be doing some live Q and A's, um, also some try on hauls, making sure you have a very detailed frequently asked questions section. That could be something too. Also, one thing that I think is really important that I don't see a lot of brands do is when you are sending out your SMS text to your audience, ask mm -hmm. them a question and they can go through and they can respond to that question through text. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to look, SG, can you go on mute for me? Thank you. And you will be able to go through and send them a, um, you'll be able to see their response to the, to the question. So basically what I'm saying is it might be something along the lines of, hey girl, hey, it's Friday night. Hope you have on, you know, your, hope you have on something nice tonight as you celebrate the week. Uh, what are you wearing tonight? You can ask them these questions through your SMS marketing and they can text you back and you'll be able to see their responses. So that could be something really cool that you could do too. Quick Another question before you continue, I'm sorry. So can you only do that? Inside of this um, session. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. No worries. You can ask me inside of the um, the uh, VIP session though. Next is going to be um, mini chat. So mini chat is going to be a really great platform that you guys can use in order to communicate with your audience. It's basically a platform where I might say, um, send me a DM with hello and we'll go through and we'll add you to our email list or we'll go through and we'll send you a discount code or um, we'll go through and maybe give you a free gift with purchase or something along those lines. Basically any keyword that they are sending you, you're able to send them something back in advance. And also it just really streamlines the process of communication as well. So mini chat is another really great one that you guys can go through and implement too. All right, 15, 15, 15, you guys, we are almost done. We have 23. Next is going to be social commerce. This was probably number two of the top marketing trends and predictions for 2023 is social commerce. So social commerce, you guys, is on the rise. And if you don't know what it is, I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. So social commerce is a process of selling your products directly through social media. How many of us have gone through and seen the little dot on some of our um, favorite stores, we click the dot, it opens the store, we can check out right there on social media. We don't even have to visit anyone's website. That is social commerce, right? So with social commerce on the rise, the entire shopping experience is from the time the customer dis delivers or discovers the product, research the, researches the product to the time they check out, and all of this is taking place on social media. So global sales via, via social media um, platforms are estimated to be a $992 billion industry um, in 2022. And it's forecast to be a $9.9 .9 trillion industry by 2026. That's insane. That is insane. So we have to make sure that we're doing social commerce. I used to be against it because I like people visiting my site so I can see the traffic. But to be honest, you can see those same data and analytics on your Instagram. So definitely make sure we're doing like Instagram shops, Facebook shops, Pinterest shops, adding all of those different platforms on the back end of our social media site. So it makes it so much easier for our customers to check out with us. Also, you wanna make sure that you promote these features. So instead, even Google, yep, you can do Google too. You can even leverage social proof and also user generated content by going through and doing these things too, because you will be able to see the audiences that are going through and hitting that checkout button. So make sure we do some social um, commerce, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok has one too. Snapchat, if your audience is on there, I would go through and do it. I feel like Snapchat is like kind of like dying off, um, but that could be another platform that you can use as well. All right, number 16 is customer retention, loyalty and advocacy. So a huge part of providing a great customer service experience is making sure that our customer service experience is ongoing and we're focusing on creating existing customers or nurturing our existing customers rather than trying to get new ones, right? So reoccurring customers are more valuable than your new customers. And studies have found that it costs five times as much to attract a new customer than it does to get one single new one. Right, so we want to make sure that we're creating strategies that goes through and tries to get um, built customer retention. So how can we do that? 
You want to definitely send out consistent email and SMS marketing, offering them um, accommodating services. You might want to go through and have a customer loyalty program, personalize experiences, educate your customers on your products and how to use them, um, and also provide them with endless value. One thing that I really recommend you guys to do is to set up an email flow where you are going through and offering your customers products that accommodate what they've already previously purchased. So we talked about earlier inside of the VIP group, we talked about the reason why I added shoes. One thing that I can definitely go through and add is anyone who purchases a dress, I can upsell them to my shoes. Anyone who purchases just shoes, I can upsell them to the dress, right? So going through and making sure we're nurturing our customers after they've gone through and purchased to build retention, loyalty, and advocacy is great too. All right, let's move forward. All right, next is going to be empathetic marketing strategies. The Launch 360 ladies know all about this. They had a tough time with it, but we got through it. <laughs> so inside of Launch 360, we've gone through and we tasked them with creating an empathy map to really go through and showcase how they're going to empathize with their customers. Empathy is everything. You have to go through and understand what your target audience is suffering with. Let them know you understand what they're suffering with and provide them with a solution. Right, so empathetic content is usually something that is meant to change the way the customer feels or the way they portray something. So if you're going to tap into emotions in 2023, make sure you give your customers exactly what they expect. Don't offer a solution to their fears and not provide them with something. So we wanna start thinking about that as well. So how can we implement this into our strategy? Show your customers that you understand um, what, they're, what they are experiencing. Let them know that your brand has a solution for their problem. Continuously showcase that you understand what they're dealing with. This is gonna build connection. This is gonna show them that they, that, you, that they can trust you. And this also builds a strong relationship with your audience. So capture your audience's everyday life and implement those activities into your content, right? So if it's Friday night and it's date night for your target audience, and she can never find anything to wear into date night, I might want to go through and send her an email and it might say, um, hey, Tina, it's date night tonight. I know you're still trying to find something to wear. When are you ever going to go through and just go, and when are you ever going to go through and bite the bullet and grab this freakum dress? I don't know. That might be something that I might say to her, right? She's having a difficult time doing this one thing. I need to let her know. I understand exactly what you're dealing with. Empathize with her and tell her we have a solution to meet her needs. It does not have to be a crazy life or death problem. And I want you guys to start thinking about that. If you're like, well, I don't know what the problem is. It literally doesn't have to be life or death. It could be something very, very simple. You're just over-exaggerating the problem, right? So a really great way to do this is to share testimonials because it's gonna allow your customers to connect emotionally with each other. All right. Next is going to be email marketing. Unfortunately. Email marketing ain't going nowhere. I thought that it was, but it ain't going nowhere, y'all. So email marketing is not dead. Email marketing is one of the oldest yet most powerful marketing trends of all time. 82% of businesses say that using email marketing is still their go-to method for brand promotion. So the prime reason is that content often is going to be very, very hard for you to reach your audience due to the algorithm. Instagram's algorithm, I always say it, but it's trash, right? So with email, you are able to own these contacts. If you are not sending out emails, guess who owns your audience? Instagram does, right? If you are not going through and building out an email list, you don't own your people. One thing that I that I really start to realize this year, because Instagram has shut off this year more than ever before, um, is I have to make sure that I get my audience outside of social media. Because Instagram can literally fall off the face of the earth on your launch day. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? It's just an app. It's just technology. It can literally disappear at any given moment. So we have to get our audience outside of social media and get them somewhere else, right? So to do this, you need to build a strong email marketing presence. Make sure that you are creating a really great way to get some leads. Gone are the days, like I've been telling um, Launch Street 60, gone are the days where you can just do 10% off, 15% off to join somebody's email list. No, it's value for value. Your contact, your customer's contact information is valuable. 
and whatever you're giving them has to be equally valuable. So we want to start thinking about that. So for example, if I'm promoting a free shipping on Fridays, I need to make sure that I have email and SMS marketing to also push that promotion. So whatever marketing strategy I have, I need to have a matching email and SMS strategy too. Right, so we wanna start thinking about that as well. So if you are not currently sending out emails, at least get into the habit of sending one or two a week um, just to make sure that you are utilizing your list and you're not just hitting up these people when you wanna sell. All right, 19, we're almost done, y'all hang in there. 19 is influencer marketing. So influencer marketing will continue to be one of the leading marketing strategies going into 2023. Um, I forget the amount that they expect influencer marketing to reach, but it's something like in the trillions or billions at this point, just because it's such a really great industry to tap into. So there are different types of influencers, you guys. We don't always have to reach for the Jada Waiters and the Arby's. We can go for the nano influencers and the micro influencers. So micro and nano influencers are anyone who's under, I believe, 10,000 followers or it might be like 20,000 20, followers, something along those lines. They basically don't have a huge following, but guess what? The people who don't have huge followings have the best engagement and they have the best customer loyalty or influencer loyalty. It's because they their audiences know that they're not necessarily trying to always sell them something. They're looked at as regular people, right? So if my best friend calls me and, and she's like, Troy, you need to try this. I'm probably going to try it before Jada Weta tells me to try it because I trust my best friend more than I trust the influencer, right? So nano influencers have a few thousand followers whereas celebrity influencers may have millions. So by focusing on the nano influencers, brand are, brands are able to stretch their marketing budgets a lot more because it's gonna be cheaper to work with these people. And they'll also be able to connect with their audiences and have a better look as far as getting conversion. So how am I able to implement this into my strategy? So first, you have to understand who it is that you're targeting. Next, you need to research and find influencers who create content surrounding your niche and your niche only. So similar to how I gave you guys the example yesterday of my nightmare situation with my brand ambassadors, that was something I did not do. I did not make sure that the influencers and the brand ambassadors surround my niche and my niche only. They weren't even influencers. They were just regular people, nano influencers. Some were influencers, some were not. So first understand where it is that you want to use them. What deliverables do you want from these people? Do you want a reel? Do you want a TikTok? Do you want a Instagram post? Do you want a YouTube video? Go in knowing what you want before you try to request to work with them. Because there's nothing more annoying as an influencer myself when I'm working with a brand and they don't even know what they want. Today, I had a call with a brand who wanted me to, I, he didn't even know what he wanted me to do. I kept asking him, I'm like, well, what deliverable do you want, sir? Like, what do you, do you want a YouTube video? He's like, no, I don't think we want that. Well, I'm like, sir, well, what do you want, right? Like you have to know what you're coming to these people for. So reach out to these influencers, let them know um, how the partnership is going to be equally beneficial. That's gonna be the best way to get influencers is telling them how it's gonna benefit them and how it's gonna benefit you. All right, we are finally at 20. We are almost done, y'all. Next is SEO. So SEO stands for search engine optimization. So implementing SEO is gonna allow your brand to reach your target audience with awareness through the consideration stage. It's gonna also nurture them and also keep them engaged throughout the rest and remaining of the buyer stream. So if you guys don't know what SEO is, it is basically a way for you to be found on social media. So SEO for e-commerce business owners, it's gonna help businesses rank higher in search engine results. All in all, that's what SEO is. So when I'm typing in a uh, long sleeve black dress, the first one that comes up, that means they have a really, really great SEO strategy because they came up first, right? Or if I'm on Instagram and I'm typing in little black dress and something comes up first, that's a really, really great SEO strategy, whoever, whatever business that is. So when it comes to SEO, how can we implement this strategy? So when you're creating content, even I've noticed this on TikTok, it works really great, um, is that whenever you're creating content, even within the content itself, if you put keywords on top of your reels, you will still have a really high chance of ranking up high, even if it's not in your caption on TikTok, which is really, really good for you to know, right? So another thing is to create unique and detailed product descriptions. 
you definitely need very detailed product descriptions. And I, I am a stickler for product descriptions, y'all. They got to be detailed, very detailed, right? Next is going to change your Instagram name to your business's niche. We talked about that earlier inside of the VIP group. Making sure your business's Instagram, your Instagram name is not your business name, but it is your niche. All right, number 21, short form video. Y'all know it was coming. So with the growth of TikTok and Reels, they have made it apparent that businesses need to focus more on short form video. I actually just got an email earlier from YouTube and from my partner manager on YouTube. And she let me know that I need to start prioritizing short form video on YouTube as well. They are following suit with Instagram. They are following suit with TikTok. And guess what? I am more than sure Pinterest will eventually come out with maybe their own short form video type of thing. Maybe even I know that they're still already on there. Um, but there might be some type of um, integration there too. So in recent times, short form video has become increasingly vital for marketing strategies. So short form video is going to educate, entertain, and even persuade your customers anywhere between 15 seconds to even three minutes. So short form video is going to convey a message in a fun, very interactive way, um, and also create some really relatable and engaging content for your target audience. So what are some types of short form video that we can, we can create? User generated content can be um, gone through and created into short form video, behind the scenes videos, try on hauls, get ready with me's, blogs, um, style content, all of the things in between. All right, next is going to be number 22. And this is re-commerce. Re-commerce is um, basically when you are taking something that has already been created, but you're putting it on like a different platform or you're repurposing that product. So in 2025, um, the fashion and apparel industry is predicted to reach $1 trillion. So generations like Generation Z have made it a point that they are holding brands responsible and accountable for waste and also sustainability. So as sustainability becomes more of a critical element, when it comes to deciding whether or not someone wants to purchase from a brand, it is important that we start thinking about sustainable efforts. And we don't all have to go through and do this. Some of our target audiences can honestly care less about sustainability. But those of you guys who maybe have like more of an eco-friendly um, type of audience or conscious audience, I would definitely start looking into it. So how can we implement this strategy? So if you're looking to get rid of your inventory, one thing that I really thought of when I was filling this in was I thought that it might be really cool if you run like a cost promotion where you donate an article of clothing for every article of clothing that's purchased. That's an awesome way to get rid of inventory and an awesome way to write some stuff off on your taxes. So if I buy something from Didi's site and Didi said every single piece of clothing that you purchase, I'm gonna donate it to Salvation Army or I'm gonna donate a matching pair of clothing to the Goodwill. This is a really, really great way um, to make sure that we are reaching our audience through causes and also through um, environmental friendly conscious efforts as well. So that could be something really cool that you guys could do too, to have that sustainability effort going on within your brand as well. All right, last but not least, we are here, we are here, we are here. Lastly, is conversion rate optimization. So Troya, how can I get more sales? I am drowning. What is going on? Save me. How can my business capture more revenue? You need to make sure that you have a conversion rate optimized website. It has to be. Your website has to be optimized, right? So what does this mean? Conversion rate optimization is a proven way to capture more revenue from the existing traffic that is already visiting your site. People are already on your site. It's just that your site is just not optimized. Your content may not look good. Your product page design doesn't look good. Your website design looks crazy. It's not easy to navigate. The colors are blending in with each other. Things are looking really off, right? So how can we implement this? Making sure our product pages look up to par. Making sure our website navigation is fully optimized. Making sure the checkout process is functional. We talked about this earlier, making sure we have different payment options and also more delivery options as well. So my number one tip, you guys, I've said this a thousand times, if you are not good at building a website, don't build it. Don't do it to yourself. Don't do it. That is going to be one of the number one ways to not get sales is by your customers building a, visiting a site that does not look trustworthy. 
I'm not putting my credit card information into nothing that don't look trustworthy and your customers aren't doing it either. So if you are not good at building websites, go to a professional. And I'm not saying like your website looks okay. Like if it looks okay, I think that that's somewhere good to start off. But I'm definitely looking into getting a web designer for my next launch because I want to make sure that it's fully optimized. I want it to have all the bells and all the whistles and all of the things, right? So we want to start thinking of those things as well.